Hey, look, check. I'm in the moment. Welcome to In the Moment. That's right, it's time for In the Moment. Let's get it poppin'. Woo! There's a moment in everything, and everything is a moment. Apparently, we talk about the lies in it all. If this is your first time, welcome to the funniest podcast you have never heard. I'm your new favorite comedian, Mo Mitra, your money back. The stand-up Katie is with me. Key Will is with me. Mm. Shout out to all our regular <laughs> listeners and our new listeners. Episode 224. We got a lot to get to. Let's tell them why I'm bad. Time to tell them why you're mad. Stress been on my head. Why they test my face? Can I ask y'all a nasty question? No. Trigger warning. No. It's kind of nasty. Okay. What? What is it? How nasty? There's levels. In a bit of a sexual nature. Oh, that's not as nasty. Okay. All right. I never thought about this. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. People who please themselves. Oh, my God, Mo. Here we go. I just told y'all it was nasty. Yeah, he did. He did. Right? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which is human nature. Why y'all acting so sheepish in here? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We here. I read an article about this, too. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I really did. You know, one time. Why are you reading articles about this? It says that. Men should release four times a week. So all right. That's like, not where Mo is going. At all. Not even remotely close. If you didn't want to tell your truths before, don't start now. Okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay? Wait a minute. I'm not saying that's what I do. After your I'm night, just... I don't know why you're reading articles about this. You clearly don't need it. Now, where was I before you interrupted me? Now, we can get there. But first, y'all don't think it's weird to get it off in front of your pet? <laughs> <laughs> What? Yes. Is that not weird? Yes. <laughs> now, come on, man. And they be yes. sitting there looking, too. That's what petty. I'm saying, bro. I've had a dog before, yeah, and somebody is. was just talking the other day about how, you know, when they feel in frisky, yeah. they get it off in front of their dog. Nah, you got to get nah. off the dog. And I was like, that's a little wild. Like, did you ask your dog be, if he was okay with that? No, look. Fifi got to go. Fifi got to go. Not dead ass. Like, your dog should have a say. Get out of here. No, nah, you got to kick Fifi out. Your dog pays attention to every single thing you do. Yep. You ever seen a dog follow you all that? Yep. yep. You don't think the dog is sitting there looking at you in all your loserdom thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done it in front of a dog? No. No, when I had a dog, and if that if it came to it, I would go in a different room. Have you, Keith? No. In fact, Actually, even with someone else, that's weird to me in front of the dog. I don't even like that. It is. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. And, I, and something happened one time. And I never got over it. Something happened to me one time. I got licked in the face. Katie first. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't my face. I got I licked, got, though. I got flipped over the dog. It was like, and I was like, get the Wait, fucking you dog flipped, out. Wait, you got flipped. Who flipped you over? The dog or the person? <laughs> Katie. Did the, the dog person, flip you over? No, the person. And when I was flipped over the side of the bed I was, the dog was waiting for me. The like, dog was waiting for me. The dog said, this is my chance. Licked my face and said, that motherfucker got to go. Wait, wait. <laughs> so the dog knew the whole time that you was really for the dog? <laughs> wait, the dog was like, yo, yo, she don't even deserve you like that. I got that. licked in my face, and I was like, that's the first and the last time. Wow. What kind of dog was it? A chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It was a chihuahua. Oh, what'd you do? The damn little thing was shaking and shit. I, I was like, fuck this. I got up. Why was the dog shaking? Because it's a chihuahua. They shake when they think they, you know, a little nervous or excited about oh, something. Oh, the dog got there on you. <laughs> the dog. All right. I didn't look at Keith's face. Wait. The dog. Wait. Okay. I'll tell you. I never know where it's going to go. I you know didn't what, think bro? I was going to find out today right. that a dog got off on you. Wait. Katie, are you okay? No. No. Wait. Hello, Chihuahua <laughs> jump from the other side of the room. <laughs> hey. Lord I'm done. Woo. Okay. What you happened after that? Can... Was it awkward between you and the dog after that? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I saw the dog, I felt like I had to be like, <laughs> like so why? Because, just because. Like you had to let him know you ain't like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at Key. You never thought about this. You never got it rocking in front of a dog. I kick him out the room. You Get have to, right? That's what I'm saying. Get Is that a but me thing? Imagine, like, for example, you're in the moment and you you have forgotten about the dog because the dog is so quiet. You don't even see the dog. 
based on how the bed is set up. I don't know. And you don't think about it until the dog starts saying, Arr! and gets involved. That's a whole different story. But they be, they look, they, they're they like very, and they're then like, it's different like, to look. No, they you stare. Gotta coat. They yeah. stare. Yes, like they trying to figure it out. Get out of here. Like they See? looking at you like, that's my move. <laughs> that move is named after me, Papa. Like, I don't know what you thought. <laughs> they, they judging you. Like it's a slam dunk contest. Like I don't like it's something about it. I don't feel comfortable with a pet in the room. That's fair. Uh, maybe fish. I give you fish. Fish. I don't know. I'm cool with the fish being in there. They're not really looking though. Ooh. I don't think fish are looking. They, no, they don't, they, they don't even know what the fuck they're looking at. How do we know that? Because I'm tired of y'all telling exactly. me how stupid fish are. Like, what you never studied a fish to know that. Mm. I, how I, do you I, know? I go up to the cage. The what do you call it? The fish tank. The fish it's tank. I go up tank. to the and I tap it, and sometimes they'll, and then other times I'll go and I'll look right in their face. When people and, come to your cubicle and treat you like that, do you always pay them attention? <laughs> hey, Keith. Exactly. Hey, look, look at you. You're gonna do the same thing. It's not like there's hooks coming from the sky and snatching us out of the place. Like y'all know what fish go through, but this not here nor there. Right now, on in the moment, we need to declare if it's weird or if it's normal to be sexual in front of your dog. I. It's declare, weird. Yeah, it's weird. You got to be a certain kind of individual to be like, yo, I'm about to just get it rocking. Right. In front of him. I really think, but, but, I swear to y'all, I think if we took a poll, most people would say that we're the weirdos. Oh, hell no. no I'm telling y'all something. What happens when the dog wants to join in? Like, right. come and hey, get a little lick? Ask on. Katie. <laughs> you kicked that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Not a dog. I, I was in a vulnerable position. I was trying to, you know, I was trying oh, to. Oh, Dog caught me. Dog caught me. My see, I didn't have the type, I ain't had the type of dog Katie had. My dog ain't make no noise, none of that. My dog was like a, like oh, a, self like a ninja. Oh, I ain't even know what was there. Next thing I know, Freaked something up. was wet. Wow. <laughs> I forget it. And it wasn't what, what you thought was. What about to be a cat? No. What about a cat? Same thing. No cats typically mind their own business, but it's still the same thing. I feel like a cat would walk out the room. Yeah, a cat, cat don't want like, no part in that. But the, the dog is there for it. What yeah. about <laughs> the dog? <laughs> the dog want to see if it's dog and you. He want to know, I mean, he want to know how you give it up. That's true. What about I, a turtle? No, turtles do too. Don't do that. <laughs> no, turtles, no. They know. Hmm. All right, Katie. I think Forget a turtle. Because no, I turtles. didn't want to go to here. But we, now we're here. Katie, how many animals have you had sex in front of? Let's, let's get to the business. Because why are you sleeping with somebody in front of a turtle? <laughs> a turtle's wild. Well, first of all. I would feel better in front of a turtle, though. I'll be real with you. Yeah, me too. But a dog, By the time they tell I've somebody done it in front of in front of a betta fish, a cat, a dog, and a turtle. They know. A betta fish, a cat, a dog, and a turtle. Okay. I wonder if they be looking like, look at that technique. Oh man. I don't know about the betta fish, but I I'm telling you the dog does. The betta fish is probably like, what what is that? Betta fish are smarter. Okay. This is not the point of this. I just wanted to know if y'all get freaky in front of your pets or not. Hmm. Not anymore. You've changed. Yep. You've had a traumatic situation. Yep. Got it. Get out the room. Bye. See you later. You want him out the room. Time to go. Got it. Thank y'all. What's wrong with you, man? (laughs) I was trying to move on. What did I do now? It was the thank y'all was the closing. What's wrong with you? That was the closing statement. What's wrong with me? (laughs) Katie is out here having sex in front of everything at the Atlanta Zoo. What's wrong with me? I'm I'm the problem. This is what this is what we can't be out here getting freaky in front of beta fish. And I'm the problem in front of turtles, bro. Can't be out here getting freaky in front of Raphael and them niggas. And I'm the problem. That's what y'all are telling me. One time. Oh my gosh. All right, forget it. Can we move on? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Why are black people always dying in scary movies? They like die first, too. It's Let's like, talk about it. Somebody has to talk about it. I had this thought when we were doing, what was it called, Katie? Rebecca's scary, I forget what the name was. Murder mystery. Murder mystery. She did it all Dead week. air. Dead air. Murder mystery. Yes. And I appreciated it. I enjoyed it. But the one thing that was apparent was everybody was waiting on me to die first. And I get why. Black people die in movies first, yeah. But we never talked about why. Hmm. Why is that a thing? I don't know, because I feel like in movies and stuff like that, when when crazy stuff happens, we're not there for the crazy. 
that's exactly where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Oh, we Typically, say, we say fuck this right? in real life, right? If, you, if we hear a noise, I'm out of here. We don't go. Who's, Who's there? there? <laughs> we just we just go all the way. I don't need to go that way. Right. Right. If you see people running, what do you do? Run the other right. way. You start running. Yeah, you you run. run with you it. You don't wait for questions to be asked, right? No, no. Have you ever tripped and fell <laughs> in the middle of being chased by Jason? <laughs> Typically, you keep your balance. Yeah. Right? So why are we always dying? Hmm. There should be an explanation for this. Why are black people believed? But it's it's got to be like a phenomenon or something. Like no, weird... it's got to be... It's got to be whoever the director is of the movie. We're going to find a common Yes, LL Cool J. It is not a phenomenon. It is whoever is making the movie. Yeah. Why do they always make black people die? No, what I'm saying is it's got to be like a a thing. It's got to be like a thing. Like, What's the thing? They don't fuck with us. No, I think it's like... We're known to like run off, run from the situation. There's no explanation. It's like there's got to be... They don't like us. (laughs) I'm letting it happen. (laughs) Because you know, ever since that whole, whole Roy Wiener down, boy, <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust Key's opinion on things like this. No, why are you trying to justify it? No, I'm just saying that. In- He's trying to find another way to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it must be like a fetish or something. It's a fetish they of. Don't like us. All right. <laughs> okay. Wait, so, what is it? Get his black ass out of here. Get him. I'm asking. I don't know what the answer is. If I had the answer, I would have came in here and said it. I don't know what it is. That's why I'm asking. Somebody should tell us what the answer is because I really don't know. I'm genuinely concerned with why do we all expect the black person to die first yeah, you know when it. we go to see a scary movie. You know I think, it. honestly, it's whoever's making these movies are the one who are coming up with it, and that's who we need to ask. And I bet you if you look at the majority of the scenarios where that's the case, you'll find a common denominator, and it's not us. You know what I really think it is, but I don't want to say. Oh, good. It fills the quota. But well, why we gotta be the damn quota? Because they don't want you to be in a full movie. It just want to fill the quota. Exactly. So it goes into what I'm to. We gotta kill somebody, and if we gonna but kill somebody, I think also the black person probably wouldn't work for the plot of the movie because a lot of times what happens in Bro, those movies. What? Okay, no, I'm interested in this. Go ahead. A lot of times what happens in those movies is you're yelling at the screen. Why are you going in there? Why would you do that? Why would you? Black people, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we don't go along with the plot. We right? would leave. Yeah. I would rather you show us leaving the house than show us getting murdered in the bathroom. But us being murdered first doesn't make it any better because mm-hmm. we're not going to watch it in general, which means you're not going to get your diverse audience <laughs> for your film. Yes, you are. How? Put them in a trailer. That's my point. They learned after Friends that you can't just have a successful show without putting one black person in. That's the last time they did that to us. And that's the reason to this day I've still not seen an episode of Friends. Why wasn't there one black person in New York City? You haven't watched any Friends, huh? No. Honestly, I've, I've never <laughs> seen a full friends. episode. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've never seen a full episode of Friends either. Katie, have you? All of them. Oh, God, I didn't know you saw every one. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. For real? Every single one? Was it as good as they say it is? No. But what made you watch it? My mom watched it. Uh, okay. it I guess we're not she wa- My mom also watched Frasier and Seinfeld, but she also watched Living Single. No, she I- watched every black show as much as she watched every white show, but she's from Oklahoma, so she felt like she needed to watch both to fit in. I Frasier, watched- I didn't understand. I did I, think I, Seinfeld was funny. I watched Seinfeld. I did watch Seinfeld. And I watched Frasier. I couldn't get into it. All right. So y'all don't have the answer. Is the answer. Nope. Mm-hmm. All right, let's try this again. It was a woman who got kicked out the club. Damn. <laughs> oh, was this the night we were in the club? Was this the night we were in the club? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got to hear. <laughs> Yo. Yo, Katie. Yo. <laughs> Why are y'all both? Because it was hilarious. Okay. Like, you kind of had to be there, but that shit was funny, man. Okay. okay. So, Key and I <laughs> are chilling. Having a drink, minding our business. Oh, my gosh. And for some odd reason, I seen, it's like somebody came and was like trying to tap me. And they were being a little aggressive with the tap. Right. I didn't understand why. But they was trying to tell me, clear the space, right? Yep. Oh, make way. That's make what way. That, yeah, that's exactly what they were doing. So while I'm in the middle of trying to figure out if I should have an attitude because of how hard they were tapping me, I just <laughs> see a lot of... I see a lot of movement, right, coming from this side. And 
I guess I don't know what she did. I really do want to know what she did. Because when I tell you they wanted her ass out, <laughs> they wanted her out. Okay. And all you saw was him grabbing her. And you ever seen like a roach on his back? It's just bad. <laughs> Just With mad legs, legs and kicking. arms, just kicking for life. Yeah. That's what she was doing. Okay. As they were trying <laughs> to escort her out the club. He is <laughs> dying laughing. Am I lying, bro? No, you're, not, you're not lying. No. Yo, it gets but better. The okay. funniest part. It gets part, better. The funniest part of it, right? And right. maybe this was only funny to me. That's why I brought it up. I wanted to know if Keith thought it was just as funny. Okay. When I tell you she was going to finish her drink... <laughs> Yo, when I tell you nothing and nobody was going to stand in the way of her finishing her drink, I'm talking about they had her in a headlock. The, one, cop, the cop had her like this. Right. Like literally one hand around her waist, right. the other hand around her chest. And she had the only thing. Her one hand was locked down, and the only thing that was out was her hand like this. And she was like, no, no. And, she, and so... She, she literally, she was like, <laughs> she was like I'm talking about sucking the shit out the straw, Katie. Like, and the cop I'm gonna like, finish his liquor. If I'm going to jail, I'm not going sober. No liquor left behind. And I respected it. Okay, I respected it. The cop was like yoking her up, trying to drag her out, and all you saw was. <laughs> I'm she, not mad at it. She's like this. She's. <laughs> Yo, like, she did okay. not care about them elbowing her in the face. No, she didn't. About being in a headlock. Her entire concern was, I'm going to finish this damn drink. I don't know what that drink cost, but she was not leaving was, without finishing that drink. So, I'm not mad at it. It was so crazy. The DJ stopped the music. He was like, oh, shit, I got to stop the music for this. Right. She, she about to finish her fucking drink. Yo, he drink. stopped and started what? giving commentary. <laughs> he was like, yo, she finishing her drink. <laughs> he, was like, <laughs> yo, he was like, yo, shout out to her and however much she paid for that drink. <laughs> Cause yeah, shorty, yeah. she was not. I never seen nothing like this in my life. He was like, "Yo, I never seen anything like this." Wait a minute, now. Then he turned the music back up real quick. Then he turned. No, I got to turn the music down. Like, oh wait a minute, she's finishing that. Oh wait, look at the way she extended her neck to the straw. Yo, like, it's is facts. <laughs> I don't know like, how her mouth reached the straw. And on top of that, when she finally finished the drink, yeah, she slammed it on the bar while they was dragging her oh, out. Like like, she was like yeah. now you can take me. Now you can go time. to jail. <laughs> like now it's lit. That was a triple. Y'all wasn't about to take me to jail until I finished my triple. She finished her drink though. I don't know who you are. Shit. If you somewhere in the world listening, hey, let us know. Matter of fact, write key on at key will <laughs> on all social media platforms. Oh tell us what you need. Key will voice. Tell us what you need to put on your books, because I respect your hustle. Yeah. That they, was crazy. They took her. They took her ass to jail too. Fact. She was like, "Yo, I don't know what she did, but she was finishing that drink, one way or another." Mm -hmm. Shout outs. Time for some shout outs. Katie, you remember that place I told you that Key and I, um, pretty much came up together mm -hmm. in Harlem, New York City, where I used to do shows, and Key used to bring his DJ equipment all the way down there in order to DJ my shows, and that's where we really got started. Grill on the Hill? Yeah. You got it. Grill on the Hill. So, Janae, our our good friend, hits me up the other day and was like, yo, you remember this? And she sent me a picture of a flyer. And Key and I have been talking about going back to do a show at Grill on the Hill forever at this point. Like, let's just go and do one more for the, for the road. And she was like, you think they still open after COVID? And I never thought to look it up. They closed. Permanently really? closed, yo. Yeah, I was really I was sad about that. I, I, wanted to, I really wanted to go there and just, like, kick it and all of that, but they didn't survive COVID. Nope. Well, they did. Oh, they did? They did, because they closed in, um, I think it said 2022. Really? Was that? That was after, wasn't it? Yeah. If my math is mathing. That was after. Yeah. So they did survive COVID. I, maybe they took too much of a of a hit to keep going, but they wrote on their Facebook page that, it was. It seemed. I don't know what the truth is, but it seemed as if it was a choice to shut it down. That the management was just kind of ready to move on to different ventures. So they decided to close it down, and that's just the end of a real important chapter for us. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're going to do now. I don't know, man. Do we have a grill on the hill reunion? And you know, Key, who you know? 
That that's still I used to go to Grill Women Hill to see us. That's gonna pull up. The people that Key, I feel like Key know the people. He still probably in touch. Them twenty two people that used to come to our show and line yeah. us up. You no, there was more than twenty two people at the show. No, it, it started off it, at it started thirteen. Off, it, no, it started off with two to three. No one, no three, two. Don't do us like no, that. No, it started off at two to three, and then you started performing, and then it was, you know, f- by the time it finished, standing room, standing room only. It was over 100 in there. Yeah. And we got it rocking in there week week after week after week after week. Man, that was a special. That was a special time in life. I say that to say wherever you are in your life right now, if you got something special going on, man, remember it. Mm. Remember to be in the moment because it ain't going to always be there. Mm-hmm. It hurt my heart to see that it closed, but it also made me reminisce on some of the Greatest memories of my life. Mm. So, shout out to Grill on the Hill. Shout outs to the man. Shout out. Oh, you want more? No. <clears throat> shout out to Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know which one of y'all put this in the notes. It was me. Um, Take it from here, Katie. All right. So, Mark, ever since he's grown out his hair, he has become a new man. Mm. Right? I don't know if you've seen it on X. He started to grow out his hair, and someone, like, basically did a Photoshop version with his curly hair that he's grown out if he had a beard. The swag that they think that Mark Zuckerberg has developed within the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And people have been, like, drooling over him. So much so, he doesn't have the beard, but he has long curly hair. He's wearing a custom Amiri shirt Mm. with Zuckerberg and letters. And he has his special Porsche Right? And his wife mm. wanted a special Porsche. Is that what it was? You it's sure it was where? a Porsche? Yep. Okay. Google. Is it Porsche or Porsche? It's Porsche. Technically. Really? Yeah, yeah a lot of people yeah, don't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. When, I, when I got an endorsement with it, them, it, I learned that. Yeah, they, they actually hate when you refer to them as Porsche. Porsche. You got to say Porsche. It's a Porsche. Yeah. Huh. And so his his wife, she wanted her own special one. But she wanted the sliding doors that a minivan has. So she went to... The most notorious, famous, if you ever watched MTV back in the day, was it MTV or P- it was. VH1? It was. Pimp My Ride. Pimp My Ride. Pimp MTV. My Ride. West Coast Customs did a custom minivan Porsche for Mark Zuckerberg and his wife. That's fire. And they have matching cars, but hers is the extended version that has the sliding doors of a freaking minivan. He's not real unless he invited Exhibit there. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. So what you going to do for your lady, Key? Uh, I don't have a lady. Yeah, but she coming. Mm. She mm. coming. What's up? Mark Zuckerberg out here giving Porsches out. What's up? Mm. How you feel about her? Uh, Porsche is... Uh, that looks... That's actually that's kind of sick, bro. It's sexy. That's sick. Yeah. What? That's it a looks mini ugly vent. as fuck to me. Oh, you bugging. Katie, you bugging. Why you hating? It's because of the size. I feel like that type of Porsche is supposed to be lowered to the ground so that the fact that you add in a minivan sliding door, it doesn't look right to me. You know why it's fire? If it was an SUV. I'm going to tell you why it's fire. It's a one of one. Oh. That's what makes it Let me see. so fire. Like, there's no one else in the world who has your car. That's true. But just because no one has your car doesn't mean your car is sexy. That's also true. But in this case, there's something sexy about having a Porsche that no one else owns. And it ain't that bad. You don't like it because it's big. It, it don't look like the typical. It doesn't. If it was higher off the ground, I feel like it's too low to the ground design wise to have a door like that. Where I feel like if it was higher off the ground and kind of fit more into the SUV form, then I was like, OK, cool. I just feel like the design wasn't well thought through. I get it. Look what we critique in life. Mark Zuckerberg uh, took right. his right. lady's car right. he I, so special Mark, for to like, pimp my ride, and Katie is here talking about that shit is trash. Nah. You know, I see what you're saying. They probably they probably could have did the um, the big. Oh, they did do that. Yeah, the so they boy. did match. It's it. fire. Yeah, yeah that's that's, yeah, yeah. that's hard. It's fire. Right. Katie, would you want them to have a beta fish in the back? You know they used to put fish tanks in the car. You remember that? <laughs> they used to be wilding on pimp my ride. <laughs> they used to really go crazy. That's hard. I like everything about it. So, how did you, how did you like driving the Porsche? Oh, I loved it. Mm. I loved it. It was a great experience. Yeah, I seen it. I'm not mad at it. I mean, it, it's not the version I would have got. But, okay. you know, for it to be a one-on-one and a custom, I'm not mad at it. But my Porsche experience was was well lit. Katie was in that thing. I'll never forget. Mo was like, yo, let's just go somewhere, Katie. Where I had nowhere to go. 
Hey, nowhere to go. Okay? We Driving. went to like Hattie I'm B's, got back. some chicken. Yo, word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still like brand new to Atlanta and all that at that time. I ain't nowhere to go. Right. I'm like, Katie, we going somewhere. We dropping the top in the middle of the road for no reason. <laughs> no reason at all. Yeah. In the middle of traffic? We stuck in traffic. Yeah, waving at people. You know what I mean? Like, we, yeah, we was living. It was, it was a good experience, though, for sure. But yeah, uh, shout out to Mark Zuckerberg. Katie feels like you could have did better and your custom Porsche, your one of one for your queen is trash. And yeah, that was that was why you, what you wanted to if get off. If I had to critique it, I'm a critique it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Okay. You keep critiquing, Queen. Let's get down to business. Time to get down to business. So y'all know they got these glasses out now, right? That you can take pictures of people. Oh yeah. Allegedly, they're coming out with a new technology that if someone walks past you, you can see their name, their it's address, much, their date much. of birth. This is insane, right? It's too much. And you know their family history. It's yeah. Too much. That's wild. That can't be okay. Is that legal? It can't be legal either. It is. Just how I can Google you or Keon and know all your information that's out there that you haven't publicly removed. Technically, it is legal. That's true. Katie does do this every week. She finds somebody. Yeah. To Google. I gotta yeah. get my shit off. Unless you, unless you go to the, the sites that you know your information is out there and say, I want to remove it. You have to physically go and remove it. If not, your information is out there for anybody. I guess if you're meeting somebody new or doing business or dating them, maybe should you be Googling them? And Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If the information is there, you might as well make it work for you. But I feel like just walking past somebody is a little wild. You now just that in the bar. Is, yeah. You could look over at somebody's table and know how many kids they got, where they live, how they giving it up. That's a little crazy. That's to me. Intrusive. too intrusive. I tell you what, there are times when I will use it to my advantage, though. I mean, like, what if you work in a car lot or something? Somebody come in here trying to get a car. Now I know what you do for a living. I know how you give it up. I don't, don't, don't come in here asking really for no discounts. I know you really can afford. Yeah, y'all remember, that, y'all remember that Cosby episode? You right, know what I mean? Like, don't right. come in here acting like you ain't got it. Right. I know who you are and what you do. But it makes me wonder, how far are we away from the technology? Because I remember there was a movie about this. I don't know if y'all remember. Way back in the day where you could see everybody naked. Mm. Oh. They didn't know I was going there. But nope. th- think about it. It's, uh, we can't I'm, be that far from that technology. You're right. We're it's probably already exists. Probably. You looked it up. No. Would you pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> now we yes. pardon. Now we pardon. Y'all give it up for me. Come on, what's up? And I want to know the price range. Y'all willing to pay too? If the glasses come out where you can walk around and see everybody naked. Nah. How deep are you going into your pockets to get that for Christmas? No. <laughs> Katie, you're lying to me. No. I don't believe you Why for a second. Why would I want to see not, everybody I'm naked? I'm not saying everybody, but it's somebody you want to see. Nah. Nah. Now, that come with the territory. You're going to put the glasses on and see some shit you don't want to see, too. You can't exactly. just. Exactly. That's, that's like going saying. to a new beach. No, no, everybody no, not going to no. be your favorite movie. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just saying, you're not going to even get them. Nah. You wouldn't buy them. No. $3,000. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> Key, give it up. Come on, because I no, know no. you getting them. No, I wouldn't. To see somebody, nah. You're not gonna get the glasses the way you can see somebody naked. Nah, I wouldn't do it. No. What no. you gonna do? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm not getting them. Oh. No. I'm not. If we can be politically correct in here, I'm gonna join y'all. Y'all not gonna isolate yeah. me out in this. I'm not. Two hundred dollars. I tell you what. Fifty dollars. If, if somebody got them, I might ask to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> just to see what it do. But that's not even why we're here. Speaking of seeing people naked, Kanye got a divorce. <laughs> what? Don't Bianca be naked all the time? All the time. How did y'all feel about this divorce? I mean, I wouldn't want my wife naked all the time. Why not? That's just me. What's the problem? Not for everybody. Not mm. for everybody. I feel like he intentionally set that standard and she lived by it. So that's on her. I really think she's manipulating her. No, I, yes she's and no. She's a grown woman. She's a grown woman. She's a grown woman, this. but she's a grown woman who played into that. So it's like, why would you do that? She obviously Clout? wanted it, it, to no, do it. But it made her look bad. Even in the divorce, right? Even say right now they're getting a divorce, right? Which means there's no more Kanye and naked woman who we really didn't know before Kanye, mm-hmm. right? Why did you do all that? Because we didn't care about you. We cared about the fact that Kanye was married to you, and we were like, "Why did he? Why did he marry someone and have this woman go through that?" We didn't care about who you were. Exactly. You just answered your own question. Did you? you did you know who she was before? No. You know who she is now? No. <laughs> what is her name? Bianca. 
Oh, yeah. That's all I know, though. I'm saying I don't know what her career was before him. But you know, you, after. that's because you're not, a, you're, not, you're not a horny man. I'm, I'm, I can guarantee you that she got a ton of followers from horny men just from being around Kanye West naked so all the time. So did she benefit? Not benefit. Like, well, yes. Did she try to make a way after this divorce by starting her OnlyFans? I'm sure she did. I don't follow her journey, but I'm sure if she did it, then I don't know what the point of was walking around half naked all the time. Mm. What would the point be if that's not what you're doing it for? Because if you did it and you went and put clothes back on, the fuck? No, if she started her OnlyFans, it would be different because she would have to charge people to see her with clothes on. Mm. All right. What? (laughs) Anyway... (laughs) You walked around. She's like, Every time you just... like, I put a new article. Close yo, <laughs> yo, I threw a sweater on. Two hundred and fifty dollars to get the picture. Cause what? What are you gonna sell me if you, you already you, seen it? You've seen That's it all. True. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. But why, but as a man, why would you? Why would you want your woman to be displayed like that? So all right, that's a separate conversation. Do you believe right people who are in, um, I guess swingers mm-hmm. situations like that? Do you think you can, as a man, I, it may be different for women, Katie, you speak on that. But as a man, if we being real, mm-hmm. do you think you can love, genuinely love the woman you're with and allow her, well, I don't want to say allow, that's not the right word, but be okay with her walking outside, showing everything, giving everything, and even being intimate with other men? Do you think that's possible? No, but I know people that they're okay with that. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm asking, I know that, but what I'm asking is, I've seen a lot of people say then you then he don't love her. Mm-hmm. Like if he's if he's cool, completely cool with her going and being with other women or with her running. I mean other men or running around doing. Then a part of him somewhere somehow don't really love her. Love her because mm-hmm. that's not in a man's nature. Mm-hmm. If he really loves his woman, what side are y'all on with that? Uh, I me personally, I feel like if you let your woman get out there and. You sharing her, you you don't really love her, and you probably don't necessarily, you probably don't know what love is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you're willing to do that, that's just my opinion. I'm. It's not for me. You know, I don't like that. I'm not sharing. Like we're not sharing. Like I'm sorry, I don't do the community thing. I I agree with Key. I feel like no matter what the dynamic is of the the relationship. Seeing the the woman you love out there doing no 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 hell no not with it no but I do know people that that's their thing that they, that's and they and, and they so claim they, that they love their their person they, yes. they say that that that's their person I yeah. feel like that's a different type of breed so y'all do think it's possible it's just not possible for y'all yes no nah, but. Not. No, I think it's possible, but I think the people who it's possible for, they meet people who feel the exact same way. Like you can't you can't be with someone who don't feel the exact same way with you. Like where you all are on the same page. Like he couldn't meet someone who's like, Oh, no, that's just no, I could date someone who could do this and that. No, y'all are not a match. But, but it's also gotta be probably some kind of a fetish thing because me personally, I I don't wanna see my girl getting, you know, Banged out in the corner by <laughs> some other. But that's the thing that I've heard. I get what you're saying, where people are like, oh, let me see that. I I that's enjoy the, the watching. I mean, I, I don't understand it, but I don't want to be judgy, right? Like, I don't yeah. understand it. It ain't for me. I could never. I love different, and I love very selfishly. But I do wonder if the people who engage in this, if it is possible, in fact, that they, they can love and just also appreciate watching their significant other be loved by someone else. Mm. And they're while we're here, though, on the topic of judging, I guess, women for what they wear, for lack of a better way of putting it, mm-hmm. I saw a TikTok, and it was interesting to me because I'm not sure who this woman is. It's from the It's Giving podcast page, and they asked her how she feels as a woman about other women who dress sexy and if they should be judged by what they wear. And I'm curious as to what y'all feel about her take, but here's what here's what she had to say. Can't men treat women like ladies if they dress super sexy? I don't want to say the first thing that came to Please mind. Please say the first thing that comes to your mind. Say the thing. If you dress like a hoe, I'm going to treat you like a hoe. 
If you dress like the UPS man, I expect you to deliver the mail. You dress for the occupation that you have. Mm. And if you want to be scantily clad, that's fine. It just warrants more attention than respect. So the question is, what is the end result that you want? And I'll tell you this right now. I don't care what anybody says. I have a lot of high value, high earning, masculine men in my life. Multimillionaires, single, happy, know who they are, certain in purpose, on purpose. Some of them are married. Some of them have girlfriends. I have the whole spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Genuine friendships with these people. Some are mentors. I will tell you right now, mm -hmm. the less clothing that a woman has on is the higher chance of disqualification for a high value, high earning, masculine man for the long term. It's now they, they'll take you for the night. Yeah, for sure. They'll take you for, for a couple weeks, maybe a month. You might get a trip. And if that's all you want, then that's great. But if you actually want to be loved and valued by this type of man, mm -hmm. you can't dress so you just can't you don't get to do certain things you just don't you don't do you feel like that's a sense of control no i, I, I don't feel like i don't i I'm feel like asking. it's a sense of respect mm -hmm. it goes back to exclusivity if everybody can see it what is special about it and mm -hmm. this in this day and age people are walking outside with lingerie on and air max is on now don't get me wrong i we'll post the rest later but that's good enough for now um yeah, talk to me, which I think. The only point she made a, the only part where I feel she made a point is the very end where she said women are walking out with lingerie and Air Maxes on. That's the only part where I can kind of see where she's trying to go with because I've, I've seen, I've witnessed that where I feel like a lot of what I've seen now is more and more women will think that coming out with a sports bra and maybe like a, like, gym shorts is cool and like what i mean by gym shorts is the volleyball type of shorts you know what i'm saying the spandex all right i i personally think that's too little to be showing when you go out but everything else that i think she said before that is leading to a dangerous territory into things that i've seen common where it says how you dress is how men will treat you but it's always led into when women get treated improperly by guys where they're put in situations that they're feeling comfortable or situations where someone has crossed the line they say well look what you're wearing and they start to that's victim a different blame. conversation i don't think that's fair I, I, i'm just saying i understand what you're saying but, but I, I, I feel like part what she was saying it goes she into that. that she's walking to a fine line but she didn't say that I, I get where you're coming line. but she didn't say that see that's i get where you're coming from katie but that's a whole different conversation to me like, if a man ever violates you in a way and blames it on how you're dressed, I don't even think there's a debate there. He's just an idiot. That is not at all what she's saying. What she's saying is, is it fair or do you believe that high-value men? Now, that's a part of it, right? Because my grandmother, my loving grandmother, texted me the other day and said that she doesn't like the term high-value because she feels like everybody has the same value. Now, respectfully, I disagree with my grandmother. Because I don't think value is based on who you are as a human being. We're all human beings at the end of the day, but everybody does want different things, right? Some of us want more. You just want more. You see yourself as more. You want more. So what she's saying, which I heard, and Key, you can tell me if you're wrong, because I see where you're going, Katie, but that's not what she's saying. What she's saying is high-value men. If that's what you want as a woman, then you are, if you're in a room, and you're dressed a certain way, and another woman is dressed a certain way, do you believe he is going to choose, if he does, based off of what those women are wearing? And she's saying yes. That if you are dressed like that, then that man is going to, in his mind, put you in that category because of how you're dressed. Okay. That's what I heard. My opinion. <clears throat> Big shout-out to Sarah. Big shout-out to Sarah. I like Sarah a lot. Um... Her at Path to Prosperity when I was DJ there, she, dope, dope. She does, you know, motivational speaking and all of that. Um, I think she's a hundred, one hundred percent spot the fuck on. I'm not, you know, and it's funny when I saw that clip, I don't know if I sent it to you or you sent it to me, whatever. I just happened to see that. Yeah, when I saw the clip, it's something that I was never able to fully like. Articulate. Articulate. Yeah. But she she did it. She did a better job than most she men did the, can. Yes. 
that she's 100% spot on. If I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Am I choosing somebody that is showing it all off for everybody to see? No. Are we going to have a good time together? We can have a good time. I think she's speaking in a way that most men are not going to tell you. They're going to lie to you. I mean, if we're being honest and tell you, yeah, and, I'm going to take you just as serious as I would take the next woman. No, I'm not taking you serious. And, He's and, not. And, 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 I think it's men of value. If you know you have and whatever value means to you, right? Value could be, you know, God. It could be whatever, right? Money, whatever. Status, life, whatever. I'm not choosing that type of woman. I don't want that. Now, is it fair? I think for me, yeah. You don't, do, you don't think it's fair? I don't fully know. So I think there's... I- no, go ahead. I think there's a lot of women who are, um, they they've been misled in in terms of what a role model and what they think guys like. Just because you see your favorite entertainer get on stage and be, you know, half dressed, half this, whatever, whatever, they're an entertainer. You're not. You're an average fucking. You're an average person walking around, and for me. There's a way that you can you can look sexy. There's a way that you can show it off. There's a way to do it that's still classy. There's a lot of stuff happening out here that's not classy. And that's it. Some guys, you like what you like. Me, I like a little I like class. I like a little class. I like for it to be, you know, covered up a little bit. And give me something to think about. Give me something to be like, oh, I wonder what's under there. I can see there's something there, but man. So I I think there are women who are not here, obviously, to speak for themselves, who may feel like, why are you judging me off of what I'm wearing, right? What I wear doesn't necessarily define who I am. Yeah. And, to, and I respect that. But my thing is this. Isn't it just a, simply a reality that we're judged off what we wear? Like, it doesn't only have to go in terms of women. Like, Katie made it about women, right? But go to men. We just value different things as genders, right? Typically, the man values what he sees as far as your body and things of that nature, whereas the woman, not so much. But she does value what she believes your future and your uh, potential to be, right? So if a man walk into the spot, he got a suit on. He suited and booted from the, from, the, from the brim. And then another dude walk into the club, and he's, maybe he's just as attractive to you, but he has on Jordans and shorts. Y'all don't think those men are going to get judged differently? Oh, yeah. absolutely. And it commands a different level of respect. It does, right? So it's like, to me... When we have this debate, I don't understand how it's a debate. You typically are taught to dress for the job you want, mm-hmm. right? If you go into an interview, you look a certain way. You go to church, you look a certain way. You go to a wedding, you look a certain way. You go to work, you look a certain way. So in every aspect of life, you dress for the opportunity that you want. So in these situations where... And I know there's a lot of people who feel like you should not be judged off of what you're wearing. And where Katie was going is, again, whole different thing. I ain't talking about that. I'm not saying you get to treat her a certain way off of how she's dressed. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if she dressed like that and she's not, what makes people think that a high value individual, male or female, is not going to judge off of how you're dressed? Mm-hmm. That, to me, is just common sense. So that was my thing on it. The other thing too is some guys don't care. Of course not, but do they do are they trying to marry you? <laughs> I mean, no. what are we talking about? No. I mean, cuz that's what I would want young women to know. Mm-hmm. If you if you go with this mindset of thinking that cuz and again, it depends on the guy you're looking for. Like she said, if you just want to go on a trip, be with a guy for a month or two, yeah, hell yeah, have it all out. You're going to be the first pick. But are you going to be the last pick? I wouldn't bring you home to mama. There you go. So that's that. All right, Dion Cole. It's a comedian. Kaylee, the black version. Why do you call him that? If you look at Kaylee and you look at Dion Cole and compare, the only difference is the melanin. <laughs> you think Dion Cole and Kaylee look alike? Yes. This is wild. I need a side by side. I've never I've, I've never considered this. this. Really? Yeah, I've always thought this. What? Where did this come from? Oh, it's been deep. <laughs> You and Key, both of y'all came in here deep. Wait, I, that's the last thing I ever thought I would hear you say. Wait, Key, do you know what uh, um, Kaylee looks like? No, I'm I'm Googling it. Who is Kaylee? <laughs> I'll show you. Katie, they do not look alike. I don't know where you got this from, but while yes, Katie looks that up. They 
Dude. Dion Cole <laughs> was on Club Shay Shay. This is wild. This is actually wild. And said that he used to deal <laughs> with one of Shaquille O'Neal's exes. And long story less long, Uh-oh. when he tried to be intimate with her, he landed in a washing machine. And it was just nothing but room. And he could not find his groove or get himself going or get himself together because apparently Shaq, um, how do I say this, y'all? What did he do? What? He, rip, what he, he, Shaq, um... Shaq was there first, man. All right? Y'all get what I'm it trying to noticeable. say. And and this is, so he said that he stopped talking to her and couldn't deal with her because of it. Hmm. My take on this is what? Is why are these two grown-ass men on a platform talking about <laughs> another grown man's meat? I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Where are we? What, I don't understand. Where are we today? <laughs> is it? That's normal? Nah, it's me. Uh. <laughs> That's not weird. They got to have something to talk about. It's mad other stuff to talk about. Key, can you imagine we two men and we sit down and you start telling me about the meat of another man of the woman you used to be with? So, Why is this? What are we normalizing today? So I have a friend who um, is has firsthand knowledge of the situation because she's called me. Funny, because I do too. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Shaq's meat together. Right I'm after I just said it's weird. Let's talk about it. Fine. Is see, this what we're doing? See, this I is bet, how it happens. With, not, with, with Shaq's talking. reputation, I bet you Katie got a friend too. Everybody got a friend <laughs> with a first hand experience. I'm not, I'm not talking I'm not gonna talk about Shaq's meat. I'm not. I'm just gonna say I have a friend with first hand a first hand account. Like first hand. I bet. Two hand. <laughs> and I don't know if the the sentiment was the same. Okay, thank you. I'm glad somebody said it. My friend said the same thing. He bullshit. I'm going to just say it. But why are you talking about him another minute? Why, why? I wasn't. No, not you. I'm talking about him. So that's my other question. I don't want is, anybody to know that. Is, he's, had... is he doing it for clicks? Because, matter of fact, you ain't even got to listen to your friend or my friend. We can listen to all of our friends. Superhead wrote a book about it. Hmm. She's it. Yeah. Hmm. Katie, that's not what she said? Yeah, she did. So is it is is it is he clout chasing? I don't know. That's a Or is weird, he is he a... is he down that bad? <laughs> All right. Y'all don't want to Y'all don't want to talk here. See, oh, he could be down what are we talking about bad. here? Did he just give himself up? Yeah. <laughs> huh? This is yo, it's been a bad year for Coles. Dion and Jay. Yo. What's up? Why are you? Why would you ever share this information? Right. Right. Yeah. With somebody named Shay Shay. All right. I don't want to part. All right, forget Let it. Let me tell you something. Real quick. <laughs> nah, for real. That's not. That's weird. It's a little too much, bro. That's weird, man. That is so weird to get on a platform and talk like and Shaq somewhere just woke up like the Fifty Cent meme. He was minding. Imagine how you would feel. You wake up and some other grown man is on another grown man platform and they talking about you in this manner. You wouldn't feel like, yo, like what happened to the game? What happened to like? It's wild business, bro. All right. From one cold to another, man. Um, Has y'all's opinions changed about J. Cole ever since he came out with this new record explaining why he decided to back out of the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef? It's the same. You know, I haven't heard the record yet. I'll be honest with you. Um, what, what what is he saying? The record? He said that he he realized he didn't want to lose a friend. He was going to gain a foe. Um, All right, he, he stop, did it. Stop. It's just it's rap beef. It's rap beef, bro. We had a rap battle here. I watched you too. No. The here AI, the AI here version, bro. The AI had me in my bag. All right, Key, let me say this, because I got you, right? I'm I'm still torn. I went on a big show, and I said, I understand why J. Cole decided to opt out of it. And then I went home, and I was mad at myself, because I changed my tune. He rapped his ass off. Mm-hmm. Like, he rapped, rapped on this record, and it distracted me, because, boy, do I like somebody who can rap that well. 
it distracted me. Mm-hmm. And he had a line that I really liked where he broke down, do it for what? For y'all who not even my fans? I respected that. Mm-hmm. Because technically the J. Cole fans are the J. Cole fans. They didn't care whether he engaged in the beef or not. If he engaged in that beef, it wasn't for his fans. It was for us. It was for the people that don't really like, like love him, mm-hmm. but we love hip-hop. And we just wanted to see a war, right. if we're being honest. And something in him said, no, no, I'm not giving y'all that. I'm not going. And then when you look at what happened to Drake in the war, it's hard to feel like that wasn't the smartest move. Mm. So I respect it because I'm the guy that's saying, no, fuck you. You started a beef. It's like he's the guy. Y'all ever seen the guy who went and got in the ring? He was about to fight. He got knocked up. No, he didn't even, bro, the bell rung, bing, bing. That boy got right back out the ring. He was like, never mind, I'm good. His mama in the front row. He to, yeah, he went yeah. right back to the lot. And we laughed at him. He became a meme because that's funny. That's what J. Cole did. You got in the ring first. It ain't like you didn't get in the ring. You got in the ring, threw a punch, and then said, no, nah, I'm just playing. Psych. As he should have because the way Kendrick went off, boy, woo. I'll never respect him for that part. I feel like he left his man out to dry, and I will always feel that way. And to me, you can never come out and say you're the number one rapper in the world because of that. However, was it smart? Hmm? Maybe it was. Hmm? Saved his career? I don't know if it saved it, but it, it certainly... It did better than Drake's, because now that's all we're thinking about. We don't know what kind of dirt J. Cole might really have that we don't know about that Kendrick might have exposed. And maybe J. Cole knew that about himself and decided, you know what? I'm good. I'm stay over here. And if that's the case, that's smart. As much as I hate the fact that he did what he did, and I'm going to always feel like he was soft for it, that's smart. Mm-hmm. If you know your side of the street is not clean, don't go in the street talking about somebody else's side of the street. That is smart. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what he did. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So, Key, where you at? You forgive him? Um, I feel like you should at least try. Get in the ring and you started this. You was in there for the beginning, from the beginning. Like, I mean, I forgive him, but it would have been nice for him to add. Hell of a rapper, yeah. but and you but and you understand, mm-hmm. but he's still soft. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Time for the show of the week. All right, uh, monsters. Y'all watch monsters? What the cartoon? Ink. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. I don't. Mike look Wazowski. At <laughs> look at them. They think they're hilarious, too. Look at them. Always watching. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all done? Y'all done? That's not the money. I want to keep guessing which monsters I'm talking about. Huh? Monsters Ball is next. Huh? What? No, man. The Netflix special. Monster in Law with J-Lo. Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Key. You ain't got another one? No. You don't want to do it? No? It's Monsters tired. in the Dark, nothing? No? I'm tired today, bro. All right. It's fine. Um, <laughs> the the Netflix special uh-huh. with the Menendez brothers. Oh, oh yeah. Those I watched guys. that. Are y'all familiar? Uh, yeah. yeah. I finished I saw that whole it. thing. Yeah. You know the story? Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious as to what y'all think, right? Because, all right. If you're not Recap fam- us again. I will. If you're not familiar with the story, it was two brothers. Uh, I believe this was in the 80s at some point. Yep. And all we really knew in the public was that they brutally murdered their parents. It was, what, eight or nine shotgun Mm -hmm. shells recovered. They shot both parents extremely brutally. Both of them were involved in the murder. Directly after the murder, they tried to pretend like they were at the movies and had nothing to do with it. And then they went on a shopping spree right after. Eventually, little bastards. Eventually, the cops found out what was going on, arrested them, and they have been serving their life in prison ever since. That's That's the recap, right? Good. Now, I'm curious. I watched the, the Netflix joint, and I watched another documentary. In a world where the abuse was real, let's just say the abuse that they claimed to have suffered from their parents was real. I don't know if y'all, y'all know I get a little too deep with these crime docs. It's probably nasty. But I went back and watched actual footage of them on the stand. Before, yeah. Right? Like the real Menendez yeah. brothers. Yeah, yeah. I believed them. Oh, wait. So I'm not they, they were saying they were abused by their parents? Correct. Yeah. Oh. Their dad... I don't want to get too visual here, but... It was bad, according to them. It was bad, bro. Okay. It was very, well, and, very, and, very and bad. Like, 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 um... Sexual. Oh, yeah. 
very they, sexual. If that was the case, the dad yeah. should be dead. Very, very. Like, I'm talking about... If that was the case... I, now I remember the case. So, if that was the case, the, the, the parents should be... They're right where they should be. In my opinion. Mom... Now, again, all alleged, we don't know what really happened because, unfortunately, their parents are not here to tell their side of the story. But from what the brothers tell, dad was really on that. With yeah. not only them... There was another group. I forget. I forget the name of the group. It was a, a Latin group. Menudo. There Menindo. you go. Menudo. 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 I believe. Ricky Martin was in that group. Right. Yeah. So as kids, allegedly, the dad did something to one of them too. Oh. And he came out and said this, which made people now start to feel like, okay, maybe these rumors are true, mm -hmm. of what these parents did to these children. So if that's the case, mm -hmm. mom didn't appear to have anything to do with it. She just was aware of it, oh, and yeah. she didn't do anything to All stop right. it. Yeah, she should go. Bye. I don't know if I agree with you there. Bye. See you later. So if this is the case, my question was going to be, should they be released today? Absolutely. Absolutely. They should have never went to jail. There's there's only okay. one reason. Because I don't... I had to look up the case after I saw I did the too. Netflix series. I did Because I had, remember hearing about the brothers, but never really knowing the full details of the case. And of course, Netflix is going to do their own version that Ryan Murphy did than what the real case was. So then I had to go back and do my research. But based off of what I saw, I was like, well, where are they today? What are they doing now? Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, one of the brothers has been hosting a sexual assault program right. that he's been doing for years for Inside. those who survived it. So that's kind of what made me think, oh, you really went through this because right you've this, been yeah. doing it. I agree with or, you. You can, either, you can easily say this happened to you, but not try to help those who went through the same thing. And him trying to do that behind bars kind of made me believe there might have been some real truth to it. So let's say it's true. Yep. Let's obviously, if it's not true, they where they deserve to be. Mm -hmm. Let's say it is true. Mm -hmm. And let's say the dad really did violate them in this manner mm -hmm. for the majority of their childhood. One, do y'all think they should be free today? Absolutely. Two, do y'all think they should have ever went to prison? No. They should have never went to prison, in my yes. opinion. Okay, Key. All right, so let me ask in you In my this. opinion... Because, Katie, you feel like they still should have went to prison, yes. right? Okay, so with, with you feeling this way... I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. If okay. somebody is molesting you and taking advantage of you and robbing you of your childhood and being a fucking monster and you kill them, you shouldn't go to fucking prison. That's my opinion. And I won't change. I won't budge on that. I know there's... We got the brutality of the murder doesn't matter to you. No, 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 no. Them killing the mom doesn't matter to you. No, because if she was complicit in the act, she should go too. Shooting your mom's like that is Bro, insane, but your you know? mom is aware that you were being fucking raped? I don't I wouldn't have killed my mom. All right. I'm being honest. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill, I would neither. I wouldn't kill anybody. If my father was doing that to me, anybody, it'd be a different ballgame. I wouldn't kill anybody. But you don't know mentally what they have gone through. I don't. I don't. That's why I'm asking this question. Man, have, man. Has, has the world been too harsh on them? Absolutely. Your tune changed very fast, my brother. Absolutely. Even if they... Okay, so let if, me... In, in the case were, of you if, coming if, back and murdering somebody who did these things to you years later. Yep. You're a grown man now. Yep. Crimes have happened. It's over. I'm yep. not saying that. Make it right. Yep. But you feel like even if they walk back into that house... Yep. Shoddy cocked. Yep. Five, 10, 15 years later... Yep. They, they should still be able to walk in court. Absolutely. Do y'all feel like if they were women, if they were sisters, that they would have walked? Black? No. Let's, let's keep them Latin. Oh, oh yeah. Two Latin women. Yeah, they probably would walk. Maybe. I don't know. The reason why I say yes to the jail time, I don't think as much jail time. If this has really happened to them, no. no. But no. the only reason why I say that, and maybe it could be a skewed way of thinking, right, is that Gypsy Rose was locked up and her mom only from what the evidence showed mentally abused her. But yet she came up with a whole scheme, had homeboy brutally murdered, and it was mental abuse, not physical abuse. Still got out. The and she still got out. That's why I asked that the, question the, about the, the women. The, the problem is this. Right now in America, in our justice system, I can tell you this for a fact because I was dealing with it last week with a close personal matter, right? They are letting people molesters walk and there's no fucking justice it's happened i'm guaranteeing you there's listeners right now who have been in this situation and their molester the person that was doing this aggression the monster the real monster has walked there's mm. predators 
walking around in the fucking streets. True indeed. So at what point is it going to stop? Street justice. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. That's just me personally. So you if, think if, any- if, you, if you're not going to do your job in the justice system, right, and lock up predators and put them where they're supposed to be, who the fuck is going to do it? Should they have free reign to walk around in the streets? I'm not mad at you. When I first heard this story, I didn't know and, any of the abuse part. And that goes I for, never even heard that part. That goes for any judge, any jury, anybody that's listening. Do you think it's right for you to let a molester walk out on the fucking streets? I don't think anyone's going to say yes to that. All right? They'll but tell it's you happening. It's Absolutely. happening. It's Absolutely. happening. It's injustice all over. So, in my opinion, if he has the, um, what is it, his program... Donate yeah. something to the program. Put some money on the books. Well, we could do that. I'm not mad at that. But my my only thing is, and let them out of jail. Is there a time? Is there a time frame, no key, on what you're saying? Right? No, there's no time. So frame. you so you should be able to kill somebody 30 years after they I, did what they I, did to you. I, I believe that if you that's, don't do that's it, a little far. You see what I'm saying? That's 30 a little, years. Yeah, bro. You should die. I'm not saying that 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 I, I'm with you on all abusers and molesters and people who behave that way thirty should years, absolutely suffer the consequences thirty under years, every circumstance. But can years. you come back 20, 30 years yes, later and kill? Absolutely. After, absolutely. After the abuse? Absolutely. Oh. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't I don't agree with you. I don't I'm not I'm not even necessarily disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I don't I can't see the justice system saying this happened to you twenty years ago, so yes. you decided to wait it. You waited 20? I don't, lethal I don't injection, see that. Lethal injection. Goodbye. See you later. Wait, what? Yeah. Goodbye. You're, do you understand what I'm asking you? You're saying that yeah, somebody committed a crime 30 years ago of abuse on a child, molestation, and 30 years later- That, that child grows up? Yep. And kills him? Good, yeah. They should be able to be free? Yeah. Okay. Sheesh. Right. Absolutely. That's powerful. Absolutely. That's powerful. I'm not going to be the one to tell you that you're wrong because I don't Absolutely. think nobody should be abused ever. I, I, I don't, but you have you your child like there was something taken away from you. Mm-hmm. Yes, bye. You should die, and that goes for family, whoever it is. You should die. Goodbye. I feel like anybody who um, molests children or anyone. Yeah. I don't. I, I I don't have anything good to say about them. I don't care what happens. So. And unfortunately, yeah. it's a lot more people who are in that boat that we just don't know. We just don't know that they move like that. But we we looked up to a lot of people we should not have. Yeah. And I think we're figuring it out one by one. But it makes me wonder who else. But, yeah, I'm with you on that, bro. But Absolutely. you always say celebrities. Why do people look up to celebrities? I don't get it. Never got it. Yeah. I, I think it's proven itself now more than ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. So you saying that I'd be right? I'm saying you're right about this. About this one. See what he said? Why you had to add that? Why I can't just be right? <laughs> you're right about this. Let me just be right, bro. You're right. You're right. What? A lot of you're no, right a what? lot of times. What? What? Ninety seven? Ninety seven percent? No. But ninety eight? You're right about this. We talking condom potato numbers? Ninety nine point what we got? Huh? <laughs> what? What we got? Just tell me what's up. I think you're right. You stuttering. I think you're right. right. So I guess what question I have for both of you. Yeah. Now when you're in a club and you hear these R. Kelly songs coming on at the end of the night, because they still playing them. They do? Oh, I typically yeah, I haven't heard it. I haven't oh, heard yeah. R. Kelly song I, in the club. Uh, I heard Diddy. Spot where, do you, we, where do you go? Yeah. Spot where we, <laughs> <laughs> okay, where the, where the wings are good and nothing is moral. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the spot that we were at and the chick was getting yeah. tossed out of yeah, there. Yeah. Finishing, oh, I know spot. they play Robert in there. <laughs> boy, that man had no shame. That DJ? No. That boy had a ditty spread. He sure did. A whole ditty spread. Oh, no. Nastiness. Nah. I Nasty was kind of looking around, but people were... They were with the shits. All right. All right. Well, yeah, there you have it. Let's get Shady with Katie. Shady with Katie. Oh, this is a new one. Shady with Katie. <laughs> it is Shady. a new one. <laughs> Shady with Katie. Time for Shady with Katie. What the fuck I do? Wagu. Oh. Have y'all seen Boondocks? Of course. Oh, yeah. Y'all know how random Boondocks could be with episodes, right? I feel that there's one particular night where I lived a true boondocks episode. And it's the night I decided to go out with my best friend to get some sushi. She's like, hey, girl. It was a random Tuesday, y'all. She's like, let's go to the bar. It's close to our house. We don't have to go far into the city. We just get some food, some sushi, hibachi, call it a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, cool. So we go to this place, and the bar is packed. 
and we sit at the last two seats at the end of the bar. Mm-hmm. Now, when we sit at these two seats at the end of the bar, and I briefly told this story on the big show, but I didn't tell everything of what happened that night. So we sit down and we're going through the menu and there's this guy sitting to the left of me. Now my best friend's to the right of me. We're at the end. He's smiling and grinning at us the whole time. Like, Hey, (laughs) we're going through our menu. He's like, Hey, y'all best friends, right? I could tell y'all best friends the way y'all pick it. Yo, back when I was in school and college, I used to do this with my best friends in New York. He went to, yeah, he mentioned New York, by the way. I want to let y'all know he's from New York. Oh, God. He's like, yeah, back with my friends, we used to do that all the time. I could tell y'all good friends. That's great. That's great. We go back to doing what we're doing. We get a drink, and he's drinking sake. Mm -hmm. Like, he has a sake. I can tell he's drinking sake. He orders Wagyu, but it comes out, like, on a hot stone. Where oh. you have to cook your wagyu, oh, so they give him chopsticks. Wagyu. Yeah, yeah, fact. It, it looked fucking good when it came yeah, out. I bet it did. So then he orders it, and he's supposed to. He starts turning it. He's like, "Oh, I'm cooking up," and he tells everybody, "Hey, I'm cooking up wagyu." Then he starts talking to himself, like cooking up wagyu. Man announced it and then started commentary <laughs> for yeah. uh, through his cooking. So he's singing to himself, cooking up wagyu. And then we're talking. He's like, hey, y'all want some wagyu? We're like, no, thank you. Look at Key. Look at Key mouth open. <laughs> look at Key over there. Somebody, yes. Yes, I, I do. Mean, you would have took wagyu from him? <laughs> you just said she had. You said. You said. No, no, no. You said. I saw you. Bro. You said. You said. Mm-hmm. If you let me get a fork and get nah, my wagyu. Nah, don't try to change it. He said, who wants wagyu? And you said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him, Katie. I saw him do that. His eyes, eyes got, got big. big. Yeah, I He's saw like, oh, him. He had good meat. He had yeah, good meat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nasty man over there. I'm telling you something. I don't want Wagyu. I don't eat beef. Anymore. Yeah. So he's doing it, and he stops, and he pauses. And me and my best friend, we just doing our thing. He pauses, and I hear. Wait, what? Uh, right? Uh-huh. There's a woman to his, like, right, right? Uh-huh. A woman over to his side. No, his to his left, because he's on my left, and this woman, yeah, on his left. And she's talking to a dude. She seems like she's on a date, basically. And she's not paying attention to him. She's talking to the dude. He takes the, the cherry tomato from her salad. He grabs it and goes... Mm-hmm. <laughs> that boy ain't pop no cherry. Yeah, he... Come on. <laughs> and he's eating off her plate. Come on now. And I'm, I'm telling my friend, I'm like, you see that shit? He over there casually, and the woman looks. It's like, did you just eat off my plate? Mm-hmm. So she's getting mad about it's a this. Fair question. And he's like, I'm just cooking up wagyu. <laughs> hey, we <laughs> right back. There's no wagyu so Like nothing happened. Or he ate the cherry off a stranger plate. <laughs> yes. Come on. Son. And then try to act like he wasn't. So then afterwards. He starts trying to talk to her. He talks to this guy behind. And as he's having a conversation, our bartender, he walks away from his plate. Mm-hmm. And then you see the meat is and it's starting to like <laughs> it's starting to blacken. And the bartender's like, hey man, hey, hey, your wagyu burn, burning. You gonna eat it? See, because at, at these places where you gotta cook your own food, y'all don't ever ask yourself what happened if the person can't cook. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, now he's burning stuff. And he's like, oh. That's how I wanted it. <laughs> so he comes back. That's, that, Yo, that that's just funny. right. That's how I wanted it. So he comes back to it. He, he flips it over. He's like, I thought it was going to. He looks at me. He's like, I thought it was supposed to come with rice and salad. I thought it was the hibachi thing. I didn't know it was the Wagyu by itself. This was $50. You know where Wagyu come from? He starts giving me the history of Wagyu and the cow. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Okay, cool. By this time, my best friend, she had went to the bathroom. So that's why it's just me and him. Having that was smart of her to leave you alone with him. Clearly. (laughs) He's like, yeah, but, you know, they just gave me the Wagyu. I guess that's what it is. So (laughs) I'm just like, all right. She comes back. He goes to the bathroom. The bartender's like, hey, if you guys need, you know, he's a regular here. Mm -hmm. If he gets too much, let us know. And at this point, I'm like, this is actually funny. I'm taking down notes. Mm -hmm. So he gets back. And as he gets back, I hear, I like it like that. And they start singing. I like it like that, right? The original version, not the Cardi B version. The 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 I don't know what the song was, but the one that Burger King used to play back in the early two thousands. I yeah, got soul. Baby. I got soul. Yeah. It's the guy, two people down from the Wagyu guy, talking to another bartender who was a Latin man, saying, 
Yo, papi, I don't know where you're from, and I don't know how you feel about the song, but I need to know how you feel about the song. I like it like that. Like, I'm not trying to be racist, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? Wait, what? So then, yes, this is a separate conversation I hear where one guy is talking to this Latin dude about how he ended up at a hibachi restaurant being a bartender. And he's like, you're not supposed to be here, basically. You're supposed to be working at a Mexican bar. And he's trying to tell him all of that. As Wagyu Man is singing and dancing. And I'm like, if this is not a Boondocks episode right now, we got a racist black man, and then we got little Wagyu dude. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. So I know Pete Rodriguez, I like it like that. For all our Latin listeners, we want to make sure y'all represent it accurately. There Continue. we go. Yep. So as I hear that, like, no, 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 no. I don't mean to be offensive. I'm not trying to be offensive. And he's saying it like that, and it's a black dude trying to get the accent. He's like, I'm not trying to be offensive. Wait, it's a black dude <laughs> trying to sound Spanish? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> The black dude's like, I'm not trying to be offensive, Papi, but how you end up here? <laughs> Yo. So I'm like, uh -huh. what the fuck is going on? In the middle of that, I look to my left, and there is Wagyu on chopsticks coming my way. <laughs> Wagyu man is trying to feed me oh. his food. It's like, you should try some. You, 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 you should really. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, my food is coming out. He's like, no, you don't want to try something. Like, I'm, like, I'm trying to share with you, girl. You're not, I'm like, no. The man is trying to force feed me. Wow. Wagyu. And you said no. Yeah. You see, Key, that's what class and dignity looks like. Close your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Key, well, Key would have ate it. No, I wouldn't. From free Wagyu? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so you I'll say, be like, yo, put it on the plate right there, bro. That's what you would have told him? And Slide technically, he had already burned it. It was oh, overcooked. Burnt, Wait, that boy uh, ain't even ask you, though? He no. just put the chopsticks up to I'm your cheek? I'm telling you, to my left, I looked at the peripheral, and it's the chopsticks and the meat. Yes. You should have some. And I'm like, no, thank you. He's like, are you sure? Like, I'm like, I'm trying to share with you. Like, and I'm like, no, thank you. And the whole scenario, it was just a weird scenario. I'm like, and this is my first time at this bar. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is just a weird scenario. Like, That's crazy. What is going on here? Well. I, I listened to this story intently because at the end of it, I wanted to be able to say, that boy ain't from New York. I can't say that. Where he from? Sound like he from New York. <laughs> <laughs> that, yo, Key, that whole story gave a New Yorker, did it not? Yeah, it did. Oh, then he walked off. He didn't tip. Homegirl was like, he never oh, tips me. And he's a regular. And he's like, a regular. Nah. She's like, he never tips me. Nah, <laughs> nah. They, come on. You got a little extra seasoning for your wagon. <laughs> Oh, that God. Freak bowl over right. there. That's a freak bowl. Drop a little steak on the floor. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> One time. Yo, shout out to Wagyu Man. Yo, tip your regulars. That's insane. Stop going somewhere where people know your name and they don't have nothing to cheer. All right, cheers. All right, don't worry about it. Cheers. Can we We're, just get to the reflection? Everybody knows no, I don't want you to repeat it. I want you to laugh at it. Okay? Enough. Uh, Enough of y'all not letting my jokes land in here. Let's get into motivation. Time for the motivation of the week. Before we get out of here, I just want to talk about Blanca. Shout out to Blanca, who is Burt's from the Big Show's hairdresser. The one that smelled good. She smelled good. With her the hair short was. Oh, woo, boy, was her hair done well to the T's. And if you haven't heard her story, man, I I can't do it no justice, Kay. Yeah, no. I can't, Key. But this woman came into the studio last week, bro, with this ball of positive energy and just like a authentic spirit like you know how somebody walk in a room sometime mm -hmm. and you can just feel the authenticity mm -hmm. you know they've been through something you know they got a story to tell mm -hmm. and the way she shares her story in such a positive manner is incredible but to give a very long story uh make it a little less long she's from honduras yes is that right uh, yep honduras and she um she had she had a daughter uh, early in her life and she was going through a lot and it was dangerous there she went through a situation where some men were um aggressive with her and did some uh, unspeakable things and so she realized she had to get up out of there mm -hmm. so she grabbed her daughter they had to get on boats in order to get a they was hiding in a, in a in a boat full of corn under the tarp she had to poke a hole in the top so that her daughter could breathe she kept telling her daughter please don't make any noise mommy got you but you know i'm gonna she was trying to get to america she was doing whatever she could to get there i'm mm -hmm. talking about she had to walk and swim bro mm -hmm. to get to america and she finally did get to america and you would not know from meeting her today what she's been through. She has um, what she calls broken English, but I thought her English was, was perfectly fine. It was. And she learned English from moving here and listening to The Burt Show. 
Are you serious? Yeah. Dead ass. That's what she, she said, bro. She used to play it all the time. She used to play the bird show. That's how she ended up learning English, huh? Wow. So she came so. into the studio and just told us out, uh, her story. Mm-hmm. And what was most inspiring and touching to me was when you hear a story like that, you would think that this would be a person who would walk around hating the world because you have every reason to, right? With what you've, the cards you've been dealt, what she was given, and you would never, I'm talking about never in a million years guess that this was her story because she came in here like just a ball of positivity Mm -hmm. and was giving that to all of us. And it just reminded me like she had said something in her in her uh, conversation that reminded me that if you have belief, Mm -hmm. like genuine belief in yourself and that things will go well and you don't give up no matter what the circumstances are, you will be all right. Mm. You will be all right. Like, that's what it remind. I mean, when you talk about what are the chances that she would even make it through all that she had to go through to get here, right? Like, she talked about how they didn't, she didn't have any food to feed her daughter. She was homeless with her daughter. They had absolutely nothing. She didn't know how she was going to get her next meal. She didn't, she got, she moved here with nothing. No family, no nothing. She didn't have anything at all. And now she's on a Burt show telling her story. She owns the shop. She got Burt as a client all these years later. Mm-hmm. And when Burt met her and went to get his hair done, he ain't know that that was the case. Like, she telling him, I learned English from listening to you. He like, what? That's crazy. And now they here today. And she's telling her story. And again, it just I just want anybody who's listening to, to be aware of that. Like, no matter what your circumstances are, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm guessing if you hear listening to us, they're probably not as bad as her circumstances were when they were at their worst. And look where she is today. And look what she was able to overcome. She didn't even know the language. Mm. Right. Like nothing is a barrier. Like, mm. you know, what I mean? unless you make it one. She didn't know the language. She didn't have family. She didn't have money. She didn't have food. She didn't have a job and have a career. She found a way to go to school, get on her grizzly, get it together. And look at her now. Businesswoman handling business, coming in here, hair look better than everybody, smell better than everybody. Like it was so inspiring, yo, to listen to her story. And again, I'm just saying that to say if you believe in yourself and you believe that things will get better, they will. You have to believe and you have to never, ever give up. And I promise you, one day you will reap the benefits of your hard work and your faith. Mm. Just keep that in mind. Yep. Mm. All right? Yep. Manifest it. Next week, bitches.